If you're anything like me, you got to the end game of V Rising and realized that a lot of it involves a bunch of grinding for resources to build your perfect castle, outfitting your servants, or just playing repairing your stupid equipment that breaks all the time. As I went through this process, I noticed a few bottlenecks, or resources that I had the fewest of that I actually needed the most to make stuff or to refine stuff into other resources. In this video, I want to share with you my top 5 resource bottlenecks and how to resolve them. I play on my own server, mostly doing PvE, so your experience may be different from mine. If you already cleared the game, you may or may not find this information useful, but for anyone new to the game, or for people roaming early to late game, these tips should hopefully help you in your journey to become the most powerful vampire in Vardaran. Number 5. Mechanical Scrap This resource is pretty easy to come by, but you also need a lot of scrap when you get to the endgame to unlock all of the possible technologies in the Anathenium, or however you say that. You also need 45 scrap to refine radium alloy, which is pretty important for weapons and the like. There is a little trick to mining this though, which I didn't learn until I didn't really need the resource anymore. If you go to Gloomrod North, you will see these little camps with these mechanical structures in them. Hit these structures a bunch of times to literally mine scrap like any other resource node. You can also use worker blood to get greater yield, which is always nice, but the best part is when you destroy the resource node itself, it drops depleted batteries, one or two of them. Depleted batteries are very much necessary for end game crafting and can be a bit of a pain to harvest. But by doing this, you get two resources in one with minimal hassle or work. At 4 we have gold accessories. This is pretty much mandatory for endgame weapons, castle decorating, making gold coins, yada yada. So if you're in the endgame, you are probably aware of how much you need this resource. The unfortunate part is that it's also a resource you can't really mine. You get it in small quantities and it only stacks up to 50. To convert this into gold bars you need at least 3, so it's pretty important to get started on gathering this as early as possible. To do that you have to spend a lot of time grabbing it by killing enemies and looting Silverite Hills, which can get a bit boring. You could be doing other stuff like decorating your castle or dying to bosses on Brutal. So what do? What I would recommend is using your servants instead of hunting it on your own. Because I am going to mention servants again, here's a quick and dirty guide on servant usage for optimum resource gathering. It doesn't matter what blood potency your servants have for resource gathering, it has very little to their success rate, and their gear you equip them with matters a lot more. What is absolutely critical is that your servants are from the same region as the location you send them to. You can also increase their success rate by sending them to places that match their specialization, like tracking expertise or humble appearance. But again, this doesn't matter with enough gear. The only thing that matters is that they gather in the region they are from for higher resource yield. In terms of time, they should be out, 2 hour increments are the best with the greatest chance of injury, but I usually do 4-8 to eight hours to so not constantly check the game. Also funny tip, you can give your servants broken stuff and it will count toward their gear level for missions. This works as of hotfix 4, so yeah, there you go. With that out of the way, to get gold accessories quickly and painlessly, gather 4 dudes in Silverlight Hills, convert them into servants, and send 2 to the church here, and 2 to the town here. Assuming they are geared enough to succeed, keep doing this for maximum yield. If you are consistent about this, you'll get more than enough gold pretty quickly and without having to roll through that area murdering everyone. Unless you want to do that, you psycho. Number 3. Silkworm This resource is very annoying to get and is required to craft some of the best armor, or to convert it into the appropriate resource for other stuff. To get Silkworm, you gotta kill spiders and pop spider cocoons in the cursed forest, which takes time and effort. You also get one Silkworm unit at a time in stacks of 50, and to get a lot of this stuff requires quite a bit of spider squashing. Luckily for you and I, there is a much much faster and easier way to get a ton of Silkworm that I will share with you a bit later in this video as it deals with the number one item on this list. Skip to that if you can't wait. Number 2. Mutant Grease It always seems like I don't have enough of Mutant Grease. It's necessary for converting pristine hides into pristine leather, which is used in endgame armor crafting and will be your primary use for it, but it's also used to make irradiated gruel that you feed to prisoners to increase their blood potency or to turn them into horrible mutant abominations. Another use which you may do early on is to convert it into these sludge canisters to make radium alloy. While mutant grease is fairly easy to come by, being a resource frequently dropped by mutants in Gloomrod and generally found in various places there, 
you do need it in vast quantities to really make a difference, which may require a ton of boring grinding and monster bashing. Instead of doing all that, get your servants to do it! What you want to do is grab two dudes from Glue Rot as early as possible and put them to work gathering resources in the sludge pits, this place right here. You can also alternate them to other areas of gloom rot like grabbing sulfur or mechanical scrap. Quick aside here, you will need a lot of sulfur for various late game items, but it's fortunately pretty easy to mine from the trans stem mine in gloom rot south. If you are on a public server, sulfur may be a bit more difficult to get depending on how many people are going after it, so do grab it when you can throughout the game. I would place it on this list if it wasn't so easily obtained in large quantities. Anyway, now we arrive at the last thing on my list. And it's something you probably are not expecting. The number one thing you should be collecting early is something you can get almost immediately, and that is fish bones. Also fish. You're probably wondering why is this on the top of the list, and there's a good reason. Fish bones are used in the two best potions for you to craft, namely the witch and the rage potions that increase uh, magical and physical attack respectively. You don't need vast quantities of fish bones for these, but it certainly helps to have a bunch saved up. The main thing you want fish bones for is absolutely farming silkworm and possibly pristine leather. A quick note on pristine leather, you can get a ton of this by killing werewolves near the cursed forest at night, but in case you are on a populated server or don't feel like leaving your base for whatever reason, this will work as an alternative. So here we have four vermin nests in a large room, although this is a small room. We combine fish bones and mutant grease and collect 24 silkworm per production cycle after AoEing the spiderlings. Minimal effort, huge reward. As noted above, you can also use this method to farm pristine leather if you need to. It's super easy and if you get a lot of this stuff to process it into silk, it's pretty dang awesome. So yeah, fish bones in my experience are kind of hard to come by unless you do a lot of fishing, which takes patience and effort. You can also process fish into fish bones, but I prefer to stock fish for my prisoners. Instead, I would recommend getting a servant pretty early and throwing them into the fishing locations. There are a few around the map you can use, and I usually have them mucking around Farbane or Dunley, but it's really up to you. This will let you fish, fish oil, and fish bones. A win-win-win in my opinion. If you stuck around to watch the outro, I have one secret tip for you. If you make your way to the cursed forest, you can chop down these trees, and these, and also these tree trunks, for cursed wood. You get less of it than normal wood, but when refined, it yields four planks and two ghost shrooms, the latter being pretty dang useful in the endgame, much better than the sawdust that you get from refining regular wood. This is just my list, and you may have your own ideas, so do let me know if there's anything that you think belongs on here that I missed. That's all I got for you, my top 5 resources bottlenecks, and what to do about them in the endgame of the Horizon. Always love to hear from you. I think I'd like to make a quick tutorial on beating Adam in my next video. But for now, I will see you another time. Bye.